Okay, I want to uh, look at the equals P and T formula in Excel today uh, to show how a loan payment uh, comes out and then show you how the loan amortization schedule works. So we'll actually build out the schedule to prove the, uh, the payment is correct. Um, so let's say you're buying a house for $200,000. Oh, not $20,000. That would not be a very big house. Uh, $200,000. We're going to make a down payment of some kind, so we we'll say 20%. Uh, then our loan amount will be uh, this, $160,000. Uh, the term on uh, a conventional mortgage right now, if you're saying we'll, we'll, we'll do a 30-year mortgage, so uh, you can put it in as 30. The problem with this is uh, we're not going to build it out that way because you make monthly payments, not annual payments on your house. Uh, so it should actually be 30 um, years times 12 months per year uh, like that. So there will be 360 months. Uh, that we make payments. And then the rate, we similarly have to adjust it. If you have, like, say, a 4.5% rate, you have to divide that by 12 uh, since there are 12 months in a year and rates are quoted annually. So you should have a rate of this per month. And then that's all we need to do the actual formula. So if you're doing equals PMT, okay, equals PMT, you need a rate, which now is here. You need uh, N per, um, which is just term in. All right, so how long is the loan? 360 months. You need a present value, um, which is the loan amount. Okay, so we're, if the loan is for $160,000. Um, and then preferably our future value is going to be zero, right? We want to pay it off at the end of 30 years. So that's all you have to do. Uh, this is going to come out negative because we're putting the loan in as positive. Uh, it's positive from a cash flow position because I get it. I get $160,000 now, so cash in, and then the payments are cashed out for me. If you'd rather have it come out positive, you can just uh, make um, present value uh, here B4, uh, no B3, you can make that negative B3 and it'll come out positive. Uh, either way is fine, uh, it doesn't really matter. But anyway, that means our payment's going to be $810.70 per month roughly. Uh, again, there's more decimals here, but we don't care about them. So I'm just going to leave that there. And then down here, I'm going to show you how this payment works. Um, so again, we're going to make a, a payment here, um, payment one. Our initial loan balance is going to start here. So we have $160,000 loan balance here. Um, and then we're going to continue to make payments. Uh, so here's two. Uh, so if I go up, shift one and two. So if I highlight one and two and then drag down until there are 360. There we go. Uh, it takes just a minute. All right, so there's... 360 months, um, and then I can jump back up to the top here. And what I need to do is just set up these three cells to calculate, uh, so it just automatically does what I need it to do. So each month, uh, you're going to make a payment. Part of that payment is going to go to interest. The amount that is going to go to interest is just the previous loan balance times the monthly interest rate that we've already calculated right here. I need to lock um, this monthly interest rate because it's not going to change. So this is going to point here, B11. Next month, I want it to point at B12, then B13. So I'm going to let that float because each year the loan or each month the loan balance should go down, but the rate's going to stay fixed. Uh, so that calculates the interest payment, which in this case is just uh, $600. Even uh, again, it won't be quite that even month to month. Uh, and then what happens is I'm paying $810, so whatever is not going to interest is going to go to principal and knock the loan balance down. Um, and so if I just do this negative payment, so I want this to become positive, um, I could also um, take this plus this um, and then add the result to the loan balance, but I'm gonna do it this way so everything's positive in my amortization schedule. You can do it however you want. Um, so I'm just gonna take the payment, uh, negative the payment here, I'm gonna subtract 600, so it's going to show me how much principal. Oh, they want me to have a lot of decimals. I don't think that's necessary, guys. Um, so basically, like these two things have to add together 8, 10, uh, 7. So these two things, uh, whatever is an interest, is going to be principal, and then both will add up to the payment. And then the loan balance each month will decrease by how much ever there is in principal. Uh, again, oh, I didn't lock everything, did I? Uh -huh, principal. Go back into principal. We need to lock the payment because the payment is fixed. Uh, again, 12 will not be fixed. C12, this interest amount will change each month. Uh, so I don't need to do that. They still want to give me a bunch of decimals. All right. 
So this is what happened. In the first month, we made a payment, $600 went to interest, 210 went to principal, so now we owe $159,789. So it feels like we're still a long way from paying this house off, uh, but you'll see that over time, the interest will drop because you're calculating off a lower balance, principal will go up, and eventually you pay off the house. So I'm just gonna double click that down, and then jump down to 360. And what you'll see is in month 360, your loan balance will now be zero. Your last month, you paid $3 in interest and $807. All right, so it flips over time. So anyway, that's the loan amortization schedule. So it shows that if I pay $810 per month, that over 360 months, you'll see the interest dropping, principal payments increasing, uh, and the loan balance dropping each month until it hits zero in month 360. So that's how an amortization schedule works. Now you can mess with this too, or if you make like extra principal payments. So if like uh, in month 10, I pay an extra $500 to principal, um, you can then say, okay, that'll drop the loan by that much. And then if I jump down to the bottom, what's going to happen is I'm actually going to pay off a little early. So now I'm going to pay off in month 358 and not even quite need a full payment to do it. So you could actually build in systematic payments and things um, to show um, how quickly you can pay the loan off if you're paying extra and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, the other thing we can do is then once you have an amortization schedule like this, we can modify it to treat other loans. So let's say then you want to buy a car um, and your car costs uh, $27,500. doesn't really matter what. Uh, and you're going to put um, $2,500 down. So your loan amount is going to be $25,000. Your term on your car is going to be uh, six years instead of 30. And your rate is going to be... 5.1%. Okay, so we now modified it. Modified it. Now your um, payment is 403.78. It should pay off on uh, month 72, and so everything should have updated fine. The, the math should all be the same. It updated the loan balance from there. All the calculations should be the same. If we go down to 72, uh, it is now zero. So the amount left on the loan is zero. Now it's going to keep going because I built a much longer model, but you can, once you have a model like this, you can modify it to work with basically any conventional loan uh, that you can think of. So anyway, that's how you do an amortization table like this, and that's how that uh, equals PMT function works uh, within Excel.